We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all so much for being here today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and uh, we're glad to be able to come to you and share with you the things that the Lord have uh, laid on our hearts to share. We thank you all for joining us on uh, Blog Talk Radio and of course on um, uh, Periscope for those that may not know. Uh, we want to invite you to do that to, to join us on uh, weekdays from here on out on Periscope. You can follow us at uh, Hawk Bolden and uh, of course whenever we go live you'll get a notification and uh, you'll be able to watch us live and so we're grateful for that. So we're starting again with the daily devotions and uh, we pray that as we go through these daily devotions that you uh, will um, be blessed and also that you will meditate on the things that you hear and I believe if you if you be watchful that the things that you've been praying about the Lord will answer and also um, I think it's, it's just that is 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 a time for you to devote to the Lord and uh, hear what he has to say to you and grow by what he has to say to you alright so if you have your Bible let's go to the first chapter of the book of Exodus the first chapter of the book of Exodus we're going to go over a few things this morning uh, just briefly and I pray that uh, this will be a blessing to you alright so in the first chapter of the book of Exodus um, we're going to start reading at verse 7 it says and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph so of course many of you you remember the story uh, about this how um, the children of Israel ended up coming to Egypt to begin with there was a famine in the land and uh, Moses's, uh, well, sorry, Joseph's brothers did not like him because he was a dreamer and he was his father's favorite, and uh, so they uh, basically did away with him. And eventually, he was sold down into Egypt. And of course, you know how that went. God's favor was on him even in that situation, and so he uh, found favor with Pharaoh and God had gave him the ability to have dreams and we just want to say since we're here that the gift that God had gave him was not only for God's purpose but it was for his as well and um, he found himself in prison even though of course he, he was mistreated by his own brothers and then when he he was uh, went to Potiphar's house uh, what happened there his wife Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him after he had become basically given charge over all of Potiphar's um, uh, possessions and land and basically whatever he had going on so he had favor but in that favor the enemy come to tempt him and he passed that temptation uh, you know uh, overcame that temptation but with that he was lied on and was sold off again and was you know taken to prison uh, in Egypt, of course, you know what happened there. Uh, he's there for years. Now, if at any moment he had complained and um, about the situation and basically said, "Well, you know, this isn't really fair, Lord. You know, I don't like what's going on here. I've been your humble servant, and I've been true to you." What would have taken place with him? You see, if he had complained while he was in these unfair conditions, he would not have been advanced. And many times, we as believers, we hold up what God want to do through us and for us because we complain, because we don't see the other side of it. So Joseph was walking by faith, and he, he uh, allowed God to uh, have his way in his life. You see that? And because he didn't complain about it, because he just went along with what you know with um, because he just went along with what God wanted to do 
not only did was he advanced in the, in Egypt, but his he was able to save uh, his brothers. Now you think about that. We know that Joseph is uh, Jacob's son. And so he was rightfully one of the twelve, what we call the twelve tribes of Israel. Actually, he was God honored him so that his two sons were included in that tribe. That's why you don't we don't have a tribe of Joseph. Everybody see that? Because his his two sons were each given their own tribe, were each counted as a tribe. So just in case you all didn't know that. That's why there's not a tribe of Joseph. It actually is, but it's divided in two among his two sons. But, and that's how God honored him. So it wasn't because of his willingness to go through what the Lord wanted him to go through, you see, just a little bit of suffering for, you know, for a little while. Not only was he saved and spared in the, um, in the famine that was taking place, but his whole family was spared. His family received favor because of that. But not only his family, you know, I guess you could say his extended family. The, the children of Israel that we know today might not be as multiplied as they are now, might not even be a nation had Joseph complained about where he was at and whined. You see that. And so we have to know that whatever God is doing in our life is bigger than we are. You see that? It's bigger than we are. And we have to be willing to, um, we have to be willing to accept that. Let's not complain when God is wanting to do something in us and we don't understand it okay so then there was a Pharaoh so you, you, you fast forward and you can see that his whole family was moved into this situation and eventually they began to multiply just like God said they would but would but what happened was another Pharaoh rose up who didn't know Joseph and uh, they just you know because he didn't know him he didn't have the same, his people did not have the same favor. And now we're talking about changes and deliverance and things like that. And when you, when you change, you know, when your situation change, you may move to a new place or may get a new job. Those people don't know you. They don't know who you are. They don't know how many tongues you can talk in. They don't know how saved you are. And so things might change because of that. And that's and one, one of the things people is afraid of is change. That's one reason why they're, they're, you know, it's so hard for them to adjust and to adapt. How many people woke, have woke up one morning and said, Lord, you know, I can't keep living like this. I can't keep doing this. Anybody that have given their life to the Lord had to come to that conclusion at some point. They had to want to change at some point. Lord, I can't, I can't keep going down this road that I'm on. Something has to change. And you know, of course, the sad part is when the Lord does send change, what takes place with us? All of a sudden, our life get interrupted and we can't stand to see what's going on and if we're not careful we'll revert right back to the mud hole that the Lord is trying to pull us out of because we're afraid of change and that's not the Lord's will if we are going to we can say all day long with our mouth Lord I want to be different Lord I want to change and then when God send it are we really ready for it? Or are we just, do we think that God is going to change us in our mess? Do we think instead of God um, changing our situation, that he's just going to come to that mud hole and just pull the dirt out of the mud hole and just let us stay there? No, you see, God's not going to do that. If we, if we are going to change and if we really want to change, we have to be willing to allow God to do what he does. Sometimes that means pulling us out of our environment. Sometimes that means new friends because our old friends were instrumental in keeping us in the mud hole that we were in to begin with. We have to be willing to go through change if we want to change. And that's not always comfortable. 
but I can tell you that it's necessary. If you really want to change, don't complain when your friends begin to see you change and y'all begin to grow apart. It doesn't what what good does it do you if you if you're changing and God is changing you and changing your mind and renewing your mind, but you still got the same friends that you used to have. You should not be as close to people as you once were when you were out in the world. If you are, there's something wrong with that. You see that? The Bible makes it clear in the book of Amos, the third chapter, how can two walk together except they be agreed, except they agree? How can two people walk together except they agree? And not only that, so let's take it a step further. How can you be in the same situation except you agree with that situation? You see that? For you to be changed in God, you have to be willing to allow God to change you, not only you, but change your environment, change your situation, and listen, change your mindset and the way that you think. Now, at some point, you woke up and you decided, Lord, I don't want to be this way anymore. I don't want to be in this situation anymore. I don't want to be the way that I am currently. You, you, got, you have to do something for me. And then when God began to do something, we think, well, wait a minute. This isn't what I signed up for. You see that? God has to pull us out of our environment. He has to change us. He has to change our situations, our friends. You know, just like if you think about school. When you were in high school, and junior high school, there were changes. I can remember when I, when I went from the fifth grade to the sixth grade. That was a big culture shock. Because when I was in the fifth grade, I was used to only going to two classes. One, one teacher taught uh, science and math and, and social studies. The other teacher taught English and, and, and stuff like that. But when I got to junior high school, there were seven classes, seven different teachers. And, and for the most part, every class had different students in it. So I went from having a, from two classes, you see, you know, going to two different classrooms, and my day, ba my day being divided in half, you know, after the first classroom, we went to lunch, and then after lunch, we went to the second classroom, same group of people. I went from that to seven classrooms to having to get a locker and going in between class, you know, and taking five minutes to do that, that was a big culture shock. But you know what? It was necessary if I wanted. I couldn't say, well, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Having to get to know all these new people and seeing everybody that I'm in the same grade with, that's crazy. So I could have said, well, I, I don't like this. What was my option? Going back to the fifth grade? and staying there. If I wanted to advance and graduate from high school one day, <laughs> I was going to have to go along with the way they did things. I couldn't just say, well, you know what? Since I don't like this, I'm going to just be a professional fifth grader. And when I turn 18, then I drop out of school. Yeah, that could have happened. And I could have just, you know, had a fifth grade education. Now we see why. So many people who have been in the law for years and years are still in the same place they were in when they first came to them because they don't like change. Listen, change is uncomfortable for anybody. Nobody likes going on a new job and having to get to know all these different personalities, you know, especially when you've worked somewhere for years already and you've adjusted and you know what these people are like. And so then you get a new job and you may say, oh, this is a good job. This is a better job. And it may be better. They may offer more pay. They may offer more benefits and may be more understanding towards your particular needs and all of that. But you know what? It's still going to be a change. You can go to a different company who does the same exact thing that your former company did and they'll do things completely different. So you have to learn the different way. And that's the way it is in salvation. When you come to the Lord, you're in a whole different company now. 
And you can't do things the way that you used to do them when you were working for the devil. And you, God doesn't do things that way. You see that? That's why we, we find out we have to renew our minds. We have to renew our way of thinking. And you know, anybody that has gone to college or have gotten any kind of education, you, you can go to college to learn to do something, and then when you get in the workforce, you find out college is seven years behind that. You, you still have to learn to do it. And then it makes you wonder, so what did I go to college for? I, if I got to get trained anyway, why did I go? <laughs> They're all going to do it differently. And God is the same way. When you, when you ask for change, God is going to bring change. The question is, are you ready for change? Sometimes that's going to mean him purging you, pulling things away from you that you might not like him doing. You have gotten adjusted to it. You see that? And because of that, you don't want it to go. That's part of your comfort zone. But if you want to change, you have to be willing to allow God to do it. And you have to be willing to accept the way that he does it. You see that? You can't say, well, I don't like this, and so I just, I'll just stay where I am. I guess you can say that, but that's exactly what happened. You'll be right where you are. Change is always uncomfortable to people, especially when you've gotten used to being a certain way. But you know what? I can tell you this. If you allow God to do what he does, the way that Joseph allowed it, change, you'll find out change is always better. And it's not just for you and your soul's sake, but it's for others around you. You see that? Those friends that you hung out with, that, and those people, those kin people that you were close to at one time, when you were out in the world, you get used to that company. You get used to talking to them on, to them on the phone. You get used to being around them. But as you begin to grow, you'll feel this tug. You'll feel this distance coming between the two of you. And, not only, and let me take it a step further than that. Even in your marriage, you'll feel it. Some people are afraid to grow in God because they are afraid that their spouse won't go with them. So instead of them growing in the Lord and selling out to God, they'd rather remain in that gray zone, or what they think is a gray zone, where I can be close to my spouse and still go to church and, and, and play with God. And they're afraid of growing in the Lord because they're afraid I might lose my marriage because my wife or my husband, they're not, you know, sold out like this. But if you can ever look past that and say, well, you know, God, I'm going to, I'm sold out to you and I just let the chips fall where they may. I'm sold out to you. You know what can happen and what may happen? God can use your testimony to pull people with you. But he can't use you in that manner if you're too busy, if you think more of their company and more of their presence than you do God's company and his presence. You see that? And so many people, they, 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 they miss out on the opportunity to be a Joseph, to be a great witness for God because they are afraid of losing what they have gotten used to. And that's not God's will. If God's going to change us and we really want to change, when God sends that change and he begins to purge and pull things away from us, and what's coming to my mind is like corn. You know, when corn on the cob is, when it is sprouted, what's around it? This shuck is around it. Well, you know, I don't know anybody that want to eat the shuck. I don't know anybody that want to, that, that's what it's called, that stuff, that, that, that plant that's around it. You don't, you don't feel sorry for the corn and say, well, you know, y'all have grown up together. And although I don't like the taste, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep it together. <laughs> no, you're going to pull that off of there. And some of you going to take a knife and, and, and fillet that corn off of the cob. You see that? Why? Because that's, that's what you, that's your preference. Now listen, God's preference is this, is this for you to be pure. 
The Bible makes it clear in the book of John that even, even when you begin to bear fruit, you can't say, well, thank the Lord I'm bearing fruit. What is he going to do? He's going to purge you even more so that you can bring forth more fruit. You see that? We go from glory to glory, and we have to be willing to allow that. Amen. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, now we'll open it up for questions or uh, from people that may be uh, watching us or listening. We'll open it up for questions. Someone says, God bless you. Prophet just wanted to say hello. All right, thank you for that. All right, if we don't have any questions or anything from anyone, we'll go ahead and say thank you so much for joining us today. And we pray that something was said that have been a blessing to you. And we also pray that even if you're listening or have listened live that you will go back and uh, listen again maybe you've missed something you know how God does it sometimes you know you'll be paying attention to one point and the Lord will make another point and uh, you may miss it but if you go back and listen to it and let it let those things sink down on the inside of you and saturate you that's where you'll see growth at amen so we want to say thank you all for joining us today and uh, we look forward to uh, joining you again and uh, sharing more of God's word with you. Amen. Have a blessed day.